In this video, I'm going to talk about good habits that you can adopt for when learning how to code. Well, I do think these are good habits and they've progressed my life in many other ways outside of coding. I didn't really use these when first learning how to code. Matter of fact, I didn't really have any framework to guide me. My motivation came from a place of really being fed up, working minimum wage, laborious, and unfulfilling jobs. I was at the point where nothing could really stop me. I went to meetups, I went to career fairs, and I was up day and night learning the skill so I could land that first tech job. Anyways, now that I've gotten older and more disciplined, I've adopted some habits I use to work towards my goals outside of coding that I would like to share with you guys. Now, before I jump into these four tips, I think it's important to understand with any advice from me or other people on the internet, you should really take it with a grain of salt and try it for yourself. I've tried endless amounts of productivity advice, self-help advice, and 99% of everything that I've tried hasn't worked for me. So I invite you to try this advice for yourself and see if it works for you. Now, while we are on the topic of productivity, I'd like to introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, which is Setapp. Setup is a toolbox for Mac OS that gives you access to over 230 premium apps that can help improve your productivity and day-to-day -day workflow in and outside of development. Now, this regular version of Setup will run you $9.99 a month, but Setup also has a specific suite for developers called Setup for Backend. Setup for Backend includes some great apps such as DevUtils that has over 40 helpful developer functions like formatting JSON and JWT signature signature verification. Another great app on setup for backend is the diagrams app that you can use to help structure and visualize the flow of data in your software. Some other really cool apps that are included on setup for backend are table plus to manage databases, Gitfox for Git management and snippets lab to store ready to use code snippets. All these apps plus more are available on setup for backend for $7.99 a month with a seven day free trial that you can cancel at any time if you determine that setup is not for you. If this sounds interesting, head on down to my description and click the link to get signed up. Thank you to setup for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into the four habits. All right, so number one, stop reaching for your phone when you first wake up. Waking up in the morning is a fresh start. However, we've all adopted this habit where first thing in the morning, we reach for our phone and we start scrolling through TikTok, Instagram, and other social media. We all know how addictive these apps are and how they're easy access to dopamine hits in our brain. Saying you want to be productive and starting your day with TikTok is kind of like saying that you want to be on a diet, but starting your day with pancakes. In moderation and once in a while, it's not that big of a deal. But if you start your day with pancakes and then throughout the day, your snacks are cookies, candy, and other junk food. When it comes time to eat that chicken breast and broccoli for dinner, it's gonna feel repulsive. Now, the same logic applies for productivity. If you start your day with TikTok or Instagram, and then throughout the day, you're constantly checking your phone and scrolling through other social media, when it comes time to work on your goal and actually be productive, it's going to feel impossible. It's going to feel repulsive. I've recently removed all social media from my phone, and I only have eight apps on my home screen that are related to business and work. And at the end of the day, if I've done everything that I need to do, I will re-download the apps that I want to use and I'll use it before I go to bed. I think if you're going to fill your brain with garbage, wait until the end of the day until you've done everything that you need to do. Speaking of the end of the day, let's go back to the start of the day and talk about point number two. When I have something that I really need to do or a goal that I'm chipping away at, I find it easiest to do it first thing in the morning morning immediately after I wake up and I'm having my first cup of coffee, kind of like I'm doing right now. When my energy is at 100%, that's when I'm the most creative and I feel most able to conquer any task. Those first three to four hours in the morning are pretty magical. A task that would take me two hours at the end of the day when my battery is depleted would only take me about an hour in the morning. And as the day goes on and my battery depletes, I find it harder to do those more creative and thought demanding tasks. So I structure my day where I do these tasks, these creative thought demanding tasks, first thing in the morning at the start of the day. And then as my day goes on, I progressively start to do tasks that require less brain power and less thinking. For example, with YouTube, I'll write my video scripts first thing in the morning. I'll do things like film 
Right now it's 6 a.m. And at the end of the day, I'll edit my videos, I'll reply to emails, so on and so forth. When learning how to code, you'll be reading, you'll be following a lot of tutorials, and really just a lot of learning. These are things that require a lot of brain power and a lot of attention. If you're working a full-time job or you have other obligations throughout the day, learning how to code at the end of the day at night may feel pretty difficult. So my recommendation is structuring your day where you do the more creative and thought demanding tasks first thing in the morning. Now I get that not everyone may be able to block off first thing in the morning for learning. I even have times where I'm very busy first thing in the morning and I have to wait to do the more creative and thought demanding tasks at the end of the day. So let me offer you some advice that has worked for me in these scenarios. Which brings me to tip number three. When you can't work on your goals first thing in the morning, there's this thing that I like to do called resetting your brain. Now this may look different for everyone, but for me, this is doing something physical. Let's say I've worked all day, or even better, I've wasted all my day scrolling through social media or playing video games, and I now feel like a pile of garbage. I'll reset my brain by going to the gym, lifting weights, or running. Something to get those endorphins pumped. Now usually I have to force myself to go to the gym, and when I get there, I'm groggy, I'm anxious, and I don't feel like doing it. But about 15 minutes into my workout, I start feeling great, I start feeling calm, and oddly, by the end of my workout, I feel more energized and ready to take on another task. Now you don't have to go to the gym, lift weights, or run. Maybe your version of resetting your brain would be something like walking around the block, cleaning your house, or going for a 30 minute drive. Whatever it is that gets you moving and gets you out of your head. I've even tapped into this second burst of energy, resetting my brain by talking to people my girlfriend, my dad, or other friends. People that can sort of hold me accountable. Accountability is huge, and only having yourself to rely on, especially when taking on a new challenge, can feel very lonely. Which brings me to my fourth and final point, find people to hold yourself accountable. Now, what would this look like when learning how to code? I would say meetups, finding people in your community, putting yourself out there, and perhaps online with Discord and Slack groups. Well, I think Discord communities can be good. I am a bit hesitant to recommend them just because with online communities, it can be easy to hide behind your real identity and go MIA. When you actively meet up with people in real life, not only do you get that face-to-face in-person connection, which can be really exciting and motivating, they also hold you accountable. Canceling in real life meetups because you don't feel like it can feel pretty stressful. And at some level, you force yourself to go because you don't wanna let other people down. But once you actually get there and do the thing, you meet awesome people, you make a lot of connections, and you learn a lot about your career path or whatever endeavor you're taking on. A couple months ago, I went to a tech conference for the first time in about three years. I had to fly out, get a hotel, so on and so forth. And the whole time my brain was telling me not to go, to not book the flight and to not buy the conference ticket. But when that voice pops into your head, that's when you know you need to do that thing in order to grow. And leading up to that event, I was sort of nervous about it. But as soon as I got there, I got settled in. It was a lot of fun and it was nothing like I had built up in my head. Whenever you're nervous to do something and you're constantly ruminating about it, I guarantee you 99% of the time, it's nothing like you've built up in your head. When I got to that event, I challenged myself to talk to every single person working some sort of booth. There's about 30 of them at this tech conference. And it took me a couple of hours, but I did it. It got me out of my head and I ended up making a lot of connections. Going to this event kind of relit that spark in me and got me excited about my coding career once again. And I met some really awesome people. And like I said, I made some awesome connections. Now, I've talked about meeting up with people in real life on my channel a few times, but I'll reiterate one more time. When I first started learning how to code, I found a meetup group in my community. We put a date on the schedule, a reoccurring event every week, and we would meet up to bounce ideas off each other talk about the projects we're working on, and kind of get each other excited about coding. Regardless of whether I wanted to go or not, because I had that date and time, 
on the schedule I would go. And it was through a chain of connections from that meetup group that I actually found my first tech job. Anyways, that is it for this video. Like I said in the beginning, this advice may not work for you. So I invite you to try it out for yourself and see if it sticks. Thank you all for watching. Like and sub if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next one.